This video is dedicated to a very simple idea, and it has to do with a commenter who simply said, you're awesome. Now, we can be cynics of that statement on YouTube. We've probably become very cynical, and as YouTubers, we've become cynical. And I laughed to the comment um, in life and in on the comment that I replied to, um, because it was the right thing to say. It, and it was funny because it was the right thing to say. There's not much that else that can be said sometimes. And I don't know if it was meant sarcastically or meant literally, but I took it in all ways that it could be possibly meant. And whichever way it meant, it had an effect. And then the effect was to remind me that people are really cool when it comes down to it. And, I, and the people that comment and the people that um, engage in videos are awesome people. And I really do look to other YouTubers that are very engaged in their audience and do appreciate the audience. Now, there's only so much that a human being can do in terms of giving back when you surpass 125 people, you reach a level of um, inability to know everyone individually. It's called the Dunbar num number. How many people can you actually have and sustain a relationship with? And it most YouTubers at some point well past the Dunbar number, you know. It just makes it more difficult to have a true understanding of all the diversity that you have um, and that people are contributing out there. Um, so I just wanted to say thank you, and I really think it is a cool thing to do. Sometimes you don't know what to say, you just say you're awesome. It seems like a really great way of saying, well, I heard you, um, I listened, and... It's pretty awesome, and you're really awesome for doing that. Um, <clears throat> but I wanted to just go ahead and finish up the thing. Though my stepbrother did come to see me yesterday, uh, the owner of the business, and we had a good conversation. Um, no, I'm not rehired or nothing like that. Um, but he did hear what I was talking about. Now, one of the things he felt was that I was definitely accosting. Uh, Melissa with a camera and that I was threatening her and you know that brings up you know then we talk about personal opinions why I did what I did and how I felt I was being threatened and how he was financially threatening me and we talked about that and I think in the end he kind of understood the um, thing and he took some responsibility for creating that environment uh, because he is an absentee own owner and that is his goal is to be an absentee owner. Um, you know, many people do it. They want to run a business. Or they don't want to run the business. They want the business to sustain them. They've worked, you know, and they want um, re retirement. And who's to say when retirement should be? Um, so, and so he doesn't want to second guess um, the person that he hired to do that job. So in the end, it comes down to her decision and supporting the decision, even he doesn't agree with <clears throat> to a certain point. So all blame um, lies on her shoulder in respect to the decision. Uh, but in, anyways, it's, it's an interesting dynamic. Um, and in a way, I actually support that idea that you know, when you hire someone to do a specific job, they do it to the best of their ability and to their competencies. Um, we won't go into what competencies she has um, or lack thereof in certain situations, but it is something that has made me aware of um, vulnerability, the, the employee-employer relationship, and it's something I think we should think about because we sort of have this 
unspoken assumption about what the employee-employer relationship should be. And we haven't really refined that un understanding since slave times, you know. And I really sort of see this sort of attitude of, you know, when you walk into this, or when in someone's business you're a slave. And I, I think there's a better refinement to that, um, that understanding of that relationship. Um, it's it's kind of like, I don't like the term fans, you know, subscribers as being fans. Um, they're community members, they're contributors, they're, they're what makes it all possible. They're the value makers. You make the value when you view, when, when you comment, you are creating value. Now, advertisers want to tap into that value, right? Because they want your eyeballs, they want your attention. So, but you are the creators of value. If without you, there is no value. Okay, it's very important. It's like without employees, you can't run a business. They bring, they bring the idea to life, whatever that business might be, whether it's a coffee shop, a, a factory, they bring that idea to life. They bring breathe life into it. And as we march towards artificial intelligence, we have to ask, well, if we don't appreciate people, where do people go? I mean, your business isn't independent of people. It's for people, by people. If people don't value your product, they won't buy it. But the people working your business... So, well, in, in, but you could look at it in another, another way. Artificial intelligence makes it impossible for people to abuse other people because... The only thing people can add to society would be value. Anyways, it just makes me think about that whole coming forward of, and maybe a little bit of cynicism there in terms of art, artificial intelligence, because I don't think people, um, I actually root for the machines in the sense that it, it draws the question of value closer to us. What is valuable? What We should value people for pe being people, not value them for being a cog in a wheel. Um, but as always, I want your thoughts on this, and I appreciate the comments I have received. I've considered all of them, and I think it's an interesting um, conversation, and I will come back to it. Now, I have some plans to do videos on a more regular basis, now that I don't have a job, um, and I'm going to sort of follow through with, I hope, on just sort of going through this process. So this is day two of not having, being fired. Anyways, um, thanks for watching.